what Paul's saying is longing for things is idolatry. That's the bottom line. Longing for things is idolatry. Now, let's, let's put this in the 21st century terms. Real quickly, uh, go back to Exodus, and we're going to end here before communion, and this is where we're going to pick up, Lord willing, next week. Go back to Exodus. You all had to learn the Ten Commandments, right? When you were little in Sunday school or maybe in school, you learned the Ten Commandments. Let's look at the Tenth Commandment of the Ten. And, and I want you with me to define what is materialism or coveting in 21st century terms, okay? Let's, let's take the, the eternal changeless God's declaration that we are not to covet, and let's see if we covet, okay? And I'm just going to cover this very quickly, five minutes, and we're going to go into communion, okay? The 10th of the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, verse 17. If you look at it closely, there are six groupings of things. There, there are actually seven statements, but two of them are, are merged together. So there's six little areas. He says, watch out, you don't covet in these areas. Number one, he says, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You know what that means? It Let's means do not long for a bigger, a better, a more beautiful, a more spacious, a more comfortable house that you've seen and don't have. Well, why we're all supposed to do that. We're all supposed to be trying to better ourselves and move up in the world and have something better and make something of ourselves. If it involves longing for something you don't have, God has already defined that as idolatry. An, an intense longing that I will get as many jobs and I will, I will do whatever it takes and never see my children and I will work 18 hours a day because I want to get that property and build the dream house is an idol, according to God. Now, it's not to our society. Probably this is the most acceptable sin in the church. We all go, yeah, I mean, you know, we can entertain people. Well, the Bible says you're supposed to entertain strangers, not your friends. And strangers aren't impressed if they don't know that you have a bigger and better. And, and part of our hospitality is we're guarding the, the house that we longed for but it doesn't stop there. That, that's amazing. It says don't wish for it, don't get a second job to earn more money for it, and don't spend all your time looking for it because that's idolatry. But look at the next one. Uh, by the way, did, did you know what the, the solution to this is? God calls it contentment. He says, do you know the liberating power of being content with where you live? It gives you so much extra time to serve me and seek me and know me. If you're not insatiably always jumping to the next. But secondly, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Men, that means you don't long for all the externally looking prettier and skinnier and younger women that you've noticed in life. And women, that means you don't long for the stronger, handsomer, kinder, more caring and more athletic and more in shape men that you've noticed along the way. And it means you don't wish you had one like the ones you see at work or read about. And you don't wish you had the ones like you see on TV or in movies or online. And you don't wish that your wife looked like a gymnast or a cheerleader or an actress model. And you certainly don't wish that your husband looked like an athlete or a movie star or a model because that's idolatry. Boy, that is our culture. Everyone doesn't like how they are. They want to be somebody else. They want to look like somebody else. They want to... They just want someone else. We should be content with the husband or wife God has given us and use our extra time to serve our wife or our husband and our children instead of longing for a better marriage partner. You know what Peter said? If you're married to an old stick in the mud, don't push the Lord down their throat. Just live so Christ-like that they can't resist you. Even Christ's enemies couldn't resist him. They said, hey, he's so kind. The way he talks. Nobody else talks like him. The Lord says, that's how you, you don't tell him, go to the gym. You know, take a, you know, grooming course. No. Look at number three. <laughs> Verse 17, you shall not covet. Now, see, all of us say this. Maybe the first two we could relate to. This one, don't covet your neighbor's male servant or female servant. We don't have those anymore, right? N no. You know, what was that about? Oh, you're living in a tent and you're going out to take care of your animals in the field and everything in Israel and you notice your neighbor is laid on a couch and people are fanning him and dropping grapes in his mouth and you go, 
I wish I had male and female servants and didn't have to go out to the field. So how do you put that in 21st century? Don't long for a more comfortable life with less hard work, with less struggles and cares and more free time to do what you please like all the rich and famous you've watched and heard about because that's idolatry. That, no, that's, that's how we're wired. We want everybody else's maid servants and, uh, you know, and male servants. God says, be content in the place in life where I put you. Use your extra time to live more every day for my glory and surrender to my will. But he doesn't stop there. Look at the next one. Don't covet your neighbor's ox. Now we say hands down. I've never done that. What was an ox? It was the plow animal for his job. They were agrarian. This is, he had a bigger tractor is how we would put it nowadays. Don't long for that dream job that everyone else has and all the freedom and all the perks and all the security and the high pay like you've seen or heard about because that's idolatry. Be content with what God has placed into your hands to do for him. Trust him to guide your path and use all your extra time to stay tuned into him and follow his leading and you'll have the best job in life that it's possible to have. You know, it's amazing how much of our energy we spend because we're coveting and idolatrous about what we think everybody else has. And God said, if you just be content with what I gave you, you can't contain how, how much I'll bless you. But we forfeit that. And then it says, here's the next one, you should not covet your neighbor's donkey. That's his transportation, by the way. So you know what that means? Don't wish you had a car or a truck or a boat or a bike or a motorhome or a snowmobile, etc., like everybody else has, that's bigger, that's newer, that's fancier, that's sportier, that's more powerful and impressive. Why? Because that's idolatry. And yet, that's a sales... I mean, I was a salesman for years. You know how they motivate us? <laughs> you get the better company car. We're giving away Infinity Fives next year if you get those numbers up, you know? And we just covet and it becomes an idol. God says, be content with what you have and thank God for all the struggles your car gives you because that's what God uses to increase your faith and your patience and your dependence on him and use all your extra time and energy you save by not trying to impress everyone around you to start spending more time pleasing God. And then if we didn't get it, look at the end of the verse, verse 17. Don't covet anything that's your neighbor's. God says, don't long for anything you don't have that someone else has because that's idolatry. How did those people live such incredible lives? It's because they were very careful to not be materialistic. The Lord was more important to them than their job. The Lord was more important to them than their house, than what they look like, than how much they had. Because they said, what I have isn't mine anyway, it's the Lord's, and however much he lets me use for his glory is great. But I'm not going to live my life selfishly, possessively, saying it's mine. That's what unleashed for them the powerful lives they had. They were just like us. They had all the struggles. Stuff still hurt back then, still was hard to live. But they were not materialistic like I might say we very much are today. Mm -hmm.